Hi and welcome to this webinar about the difference between weak and strong coupling in FSI simulations in LSDyna. My name is Marcus Timgren and I'm working at Dynamo Nordic. And if you have any questions, uh, please send me an email here at my email address. I will start with an intro about the E50 solver and then I I'm going to move on to the difference between strong and weak coupling and then a brief discussion about added mass effect and then a section about one-way or two-way FSI coupling and then how a strong FSI coupling is set up and a weak FSI coupling and after that I will give an example that shows the difference between strong and weak coupling. The eSafety solver is a safety code that uses double precision and it's an implicit solver and it's available from ver version R7 of LSDyna but I recommend to use the latest version R9.1 and it uses the finite element method and it can be coupled to the structure solver, the thermal solver, the discrete element method, and the electromagnetic solver. And you can also combine several of these uh, different solvers, so you're not limited to only couple two of them. And it has a new set of uh, keywords, star ECFD and star mesh. And at the, at the moment, it's only a transient solver. But a steady state is under development and if you are interested, uh, two examples of the steady state solver is available at dynaexamples.com But you have to contact your local distributor to get a development version of LSDyna. There exist uh, two main groups of FSI couplings, namely monolithic and partitioned. In a monolithic problem, the whole uh, problem is solved, which means that you have one big matrix uh, that includes both the structural and the fluid problem. So you will have you, you will need a solver that has both the structural and the fluid capabilities included into one solver. In the partitioned approach uh, you have one solver for each field so the fluid uh, has problem has one solver and the structural problem has one solver and then they are solved and the problems are solved separately and uh, then you couple couple them together main difference between strong and weak coupling is how the time step is taken. In a weak or loose FSI coupling, uh, each solver has its own time step. So for example here, the fluid side has taken a larger time step than the solid, which is often the case since the solid is in explicit mode and uh, CFD is in implicit and then the forces are interpolated uh, between the fluid time step and then the displacement are mapped back to the fluid solver but in a strong case strong FSI coupling you both solvers take the same time step and in Elastina the time step is determined by the smallest between the two solvers. So if the fluid want to take a smaller time step than the structural solver, then the fluid time step will be used for both solvers. And during each time step, a Newton loop is performed to check convergence before moving on to the next time step. The added mass effect uh, comes from the inertia that is added to a system due to the fact that an uh, accelerating uh, body in a fluid must move a 
certain volume of sur surrounding fluid. And it's a numerical effect that have, has been named added mass effect in the literature. And this instability can occur when the densities of the fluid and uh, the structure are close. The time step is small or when you have a weak structure. And one application where this effect is important is in the biomechanical uh, simulations. So, for example, when you simulate uh, a heart, then the tissue and the blood will basically have the same density. And in the eCFD solver, a stabilization technique has been, has been implemented that improves the convergence in, in cases that has added mass effect. But you can still have some convergence problem. One way or two way FSI coupling controls uh, the information that is transferred between the two solvers. So in a one way coupling, only one of the solvers is transferring data to the other. In Elastina, this is controlled by the keyword eCFD control FSI. And uh, as default, uh, it's set to a two-way coupling, but you can change this by changing the o o OWC parameter. And uh, if you set it to one, the solver, the structure solver, will transfer the displacement to the fluid solver, and if you set it to two. The fluid solver will transfer the stresses to the solid solver. And uh, remember that both the eCFD control FSI keyword and the eCFD boundary FSI keyword must be defined in all FSI simulations. To activate a strong FSI coupling, you have to use the implicit structure solver since the fluid is an uh, implicit solver. And to activate the implicit structure solver, you have to use uh, control implicit general, control implicit solution, and it's often good to use control implicit dynamics as well. So change the in flag on control implicit general to one, to activate the implicit structure solver. And uh, on the on control implicit solution, I use the nonlinear solver number 12, which is the new default solver from version R9 of uh, Elastina. And if you want some guidelines uh, about implicit simulations, you can check uh, dynasupport.com uh, where you can cl click and find a guide guideline package about implicit simulations and uh, on control implicit dynamics you change the i mass value to 1 to activate the dynamics and if you use the default values you will not get any numerical damping but it's often good to add some numerical dampening and we recommend to use gamma value of 0 0.6 and a beta value of 0 0.38. To use a weak FSI coupling, the structural explicit solver is used. And that, that depending on which type of problem you're going to solve, you may want to control the time step of the structure solver and you can do that by using the keyword control time step. And one case where you want to control the time step is when you have, have a rigid material and since then the solver may want to take a too high time step so the difference is really big between the CFD time step and the structural time step. So if you 
Use a load curve on control time step in the parameter LCTM. You can define the time step that you want to use. So the simulation time will be on the x axis and the time step value will be on the y axis on the load curve. And remember that the forces uh, from the fluid is interpolated between the, the fluid time steps to the structural solver. And, sin and this can lead to instabilities in some solutions. Now we're going to look at an example that demonstrates the difference between strong and weak FSI coupling. And uh, the inlet has a prescribed velocity of 0 0.1 that is ramped up uh, after 5 seconds. So during the first 5 seconds, uh, the velocity is 0. And the outlet has a zero pressure condition and the domain boundaries has a free slip condition and the cylinder here has a no slip condition. And the structure is located inside the yellow, structure, yellow uh, circle here. And the structure is free to move in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction it has a prescribed oscillating motion and the structure is rigid. This is an easy and good example uh, that uh, demonstrates the difference between strong and weak coupling and you can download the example at dynexamples.com. The, the case uses a strong FSI coupling and the density is set to 1.2 for the solid and the fluid density is set to 1. So since the densities are quite similar, we will have a uh, added mass effect in the simulation. So I recommend you to run the problem as, as it is and then change it to a weak coupling. And you do that by uh, removing the include the keyword and then add the keyword control time step uh, with a load curve uh, with uh, with a time step of, of one and then run the problem again and compare with the previously solution so here i've plotted the result from the simulations and the top one is from the strong FSI coupling and as you can see you have a nice motion that oscillates in the vertical direction and when the fluid is applied it uh, moves, moves, uh, moves with the flow um, but in the weak coupling you can see uh, oscillation is occurring in the horizontal direction as well so it moves against the flow Here I have plotted the X displacement, so the displacement in the hor horizontal direction uh, for, the, for the strong coupling and for the weak coupling. I have kept the time, fluid time step uh, constant to 0 0.05 and then I have changed the structure and time step for the weak coupling. So when we use a big time step uh, you can see that we have a really big difference in the x displacement. Um, but if you decrease the time step, we get closer to the strong case. But if you use the same time step as in the strong case for the weak coupling as well, we get a really big uh, uh, oscillations that will make the simulation crash. So here is the result from the weak coupling case that uses the same time step as the strong coupling. 
And as you can see, the oscillation starts even before the velocity is applied. And it gets bigger and bigger, and then it leads to that the simulation ends with error termination due to the high os os oscillations of the structural part. And some uh, basic guidelines for FSI simulation is that when you have really big deformations, uh, use a strong coupling. And also when you have a structural density that is in the same order as the fluid. And remember that the solver uses the same time step and that the iteration loop occurs uh, during each time step. The weak coupling is faster but you lose some accuracy due to the different time steps. And uh, no iteration loop occurs uh, between the solvers. So the forces and forces are interpolated from the fluid solver. And for cases where only one field affects the other, use a one-way coupling to save some time. And uh, for the first simulation, I recommend to use the automatic time step for the fluid. And then when you have looked at the result, change it uh, to get off, uh, to improve the simulation time. If you do it like this, you will get an idea where you can put your time step. And if you have some control convergence uh, trouble on the structural side, I recommend to add the control implicit auto, which uh, activates the automatic time step for the implicit solver. That was all that I had for this webinar. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to stay updated on when the next webinar will be av available. Thank you for listening.